Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today we're going to be going over five tips for properly using a vignette in GIMP. Now the version of GIMP I'm using today is GIMP 2.10 RC1 or Release Candidate 1. I think they're about to come out with Release Candidate 2 and then sometime after that will be the stable release version of GIMP 2.10. So they're still working out a few bugs with this version, uh, but it is a step in the direction towards the first stable release in seven years. Now I'll be using a lot of the vignette tool in this tutorial obviously and you can access that by going to filters, light and shadow, vignette, but if you do not have the latest version of GIMP, if you're using 2.8.22, something of that nature, just go to tools, Gaggle operation, and then under the drop down you should find vignette. It's not going to be in the newest version because uh, this is just built directly into the filters area, but you should find that in GIMP version 2.8.22. But before we dive into this tutorial, of course I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. You'll find plenty of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course on Udemy from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And of course I'll include a link to this in the description as well as a link to our Patreon page. So thank you for everybody who's been supporting us on Patreon thus far. If you haven't become a patron yet, you can do so for as little as a dollar and it helps our channel grow and you get a bunch of cool rewards and exclusive GIMP content in return. Now all of the images that I'm using in today's tutorial come from either Pexels or Pixabay and I'll include a link to each of the images that I use in the description and you can download those for free. So my first tip is a pretty basic tip and that is that you should always add your vignette to a new layer as I've done on this image here. And the reason for that is that if you add it directly to the image layer, you're not really gonna be able to delete this vignette if you don't want it later or make any adjustments to it. For instance, changing the mode, uh, the layer mode of the vignette layer or decreasing the opacity of the vignette layer at a later time. So you'll see in this case, I can decrease or increase the opacity of this vignette. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that real quick on this image here. This is another free stock image that I got and I'll include a link to this in the description. But I'll just show you real quick adding a basic vignette on its own layer. So here when I open my image into GIMP and you can do that by going to File Open and just selecting the file from your computer. But it'll open like this by default. This was my default name for my image. You can double click on this and just name this Raspberry image if you want to simplify it. I'll show you both ways for adding the vignette both on the direct image layer and then on its own layer. So if I go to filters, light and shadow, vignette, you'll see that the vignette is drawn here and I can make adjustments to my settings which I'll go over in a second and I can do a split preview if I'm using the latest version of GIMP where I can see uh, here's after the vignette is applied and here's before the vignette is applied or you could just split it down the middle. But I'll go ahead and click OK. Now this adds a vignette directly onto my image layer. The issue with this is that if I want to decrease the opacity of this vignette after the fact, I can't do that because it's directly on my image layer. I also can't change the mode of the vignette itself because again, it is on that same layer. So let me undo all that. So I'm just hitting Control Z on my keyboard and then I'll go ahead and add a new layer and we can just name this vignette as I've already done. You can even add a color tag to this if you want. Make sure the fill width is set to transparency and click OK. And then we'll just go to filters, repeat vignette to reapply that vignette. Now that vignette has been applied on its own layer and I can adjust the opacity of this, I can change the layer mode if I wanna create a different sort of effect with that vignette. So it's just a lot more flexible and I can come over here and just delete the vignette if I don't want this anymore. Um, but I'll just leave it here as is for now. So that's why you should always add a vignette to a new layer. Now my second tip is that you should never make the vignette too prevalent. And so I'll start over with my vignette and I'll just delete this layer that we created real quick. And I'll create a new layer and we'll just name this vignette again. Click OK. Now if I go to filters, light and shadow, vignette, you'll notice that by default the vignette is actually very prevalent within GIMP when you're using this Gaggle vignette filter. And it doesn't look too bad with this photo because this photo is pretty dark around the edges as is. So it does sort of blend in more than usual. Uh, but you don't want this vignette to be too prevalent. And I still think that even though it doesn't look too terrible, right now it is way too prevalent in the image. And this is especially true when you're trying to uh, change the position of the vignette. So for instance, if I want to make this off center and I want to decrease the radius here, obviously this is way too prevalent. And if you ever had this as your finished photo, this would look pretty ridiculous. And I'm just gonna change this back to 0.5, which is going to center my vignette directly on the image. And then I'm gonna increase the radius here. 
But let's say you wanted to go with this as your final vignette settings. So I'll click OK. So not only is this covering some of the stuff going on in the image, like some of the flowers and just whatever's going on in the corners here, but it's also way too noticeable by the viewer. So right now we can tell 100% that there's a vignette on here versus when I crank this down a little bit, you could see the details in the corners and it's really hard to notice that there's even a vignette here at all. Unless I hide that vignette and then show it again, you can tell that there is a little bit of vignette. So just make sure that when you're drawing your vignette that it's not too prevalent. It should just add a little bit of contrast to the image and draw the eye towards whatever part of the image you're wanting your viewers to look at. Tip number three is that you should make sure the vignette enhances the main subject or object in the photo. So I came back here to the original photo that I showed you guys at the beginning of the tutorial. And the reason being that this vignette, you'll see here in the layer, that the vignette is pretty off center and it skews in the direction of the girl in our photo here that's rock climbing. So I'll go ahead and hide this vignette. And this is what the image looked like before I applied a vignette. And right now the image is pretty even throughout in terms of just the lighting and the color. So it's really hard to tell where your eyes should be looking. And then it takes kind of a second to realize that there's a girl on here and she's rock climbing. And if I come over to our main image layer, add a new layer, and we'll just name this vignette and we'll go to Filters, Light and Shadow, Vignette. You'll notice that if I just create a standard vignette here that it draws our eye right here into the center of the image and that's not really anything that we're supposed to be looking at. It's just a lot of wall space and some grabs here. Uh, whereas our subject down here starts to get lost in the vignette, you know, she starts to get darker basically because the vignette is going from the lightest part of the image to the black uh, color that we selected for the vignette. So it draws our eye to the wrong location and it hides our main subject. So this is not what we want at all. So with our vignette settings, we can change the location of the vignette and we can even change the radius of it and the proportion of the vignette itself. So right now it's set to a proportion of one, which means it's going to have the exact same proportions of our image. And our image isn't a perfect square, it's actually a rectangle, which means our vignette is going to be stretched out a little bit to match those proportions. But let me go ahead and start with this radius here. So the radius is basically how wide the vignette is. And if I go ahead and increase the radius, you'll see that it gets wider and wider and it starts to disappear off the screen. But if I decrease the radius, it actually gets smaller. And for this image, I actually do want this vignette to be smaller because our subject is really small relative to the rest of the image. The next thing I want to do right now, it's centered on the exact center of the image. That's why this is set to 0.5 and 0.5. So the next thing I can do is drag the Y slider here, the center Y. And what that's going to do is move our vignette vertically on our composition here, vertically on our canvas. And you'll see as I drag this that it's repositioning this lower and lower as I drag more to the right. And if I drag to the left, it'll reposition it higher. So I want to drag this so that it is basically completely centered on our main subject of our image. And that's about right, right there. Now the next thing you'll notice is that this is an oval shape here. And that made sense when we were keeping this around the corners of our image because it allowed the vignette to perfectly intersect with the corners here and make a nice vignette when applying a vignette to the image as a whole. But when we're just applying a vignette to the subject, this doesn't make as much sense. So what you can do is come over here to the proportion and go ahead and turn it down. And you'll see that this starts to become less of an oval and more of a circle. And to me, that makes a little bit more sense. And you can also adjust this with the squeeze. And so if you decrease the squeeze, you'll see this starts to get narrow more vertically. And if I increase the squeeze, it'll get narrow horizontally. And I think that because her range of motion is going more upward, it does help the eye a little bit to squeeze this in so that the vignette is sort of moving upward with her. But it doesn't have to be too prevalent here, so we, we don't want to overdo the effect. So I'll just keep the squeeze where it is right here. And that is a negative value, you'll notice. So that's causing this to be more vertically oriented versus horizontally. So now I'll click OK and that'll apply our vignette. And this actually violates our second tip, which is not to make the vignette too prevalent. Right now, this is way too prevalent. If you kept this like this, I mean, it just covers way too much of the image and looks way too artificial. So we do want to make this a little less prevalent. And I can do that again by clicking on that vignette layer and coming over to opacity and just decreasing that opacity until this is barely prevalent here. And so I have this set to around 31% right now. And if I hide the vignette, you'll see it's kind of hard to see where our eye should be. But if I show the vignette, now our eye starts to come down here to our subject because everything else is grayed out a little bit. And you can even turn this down actually a little bit more. 
So I think the main takeaway here with this tip is that vignettes are not always perfectly centered on the image. Sometimes they are skewed off center a little bit to draw your eye to the proper place in the image. Now my next tip is that you should know when a vignette is necessary and when it is not. So for this example, I have a photo of a beautiful sunset here on a beach and it's debatable whether or not this needs a vignette. I've seen a lot of people place vignettes on nature photographs. In my opinion, I think if the photograph is beautiful enough in itself, it doesn't really need any sort of enhancement like a vignette. Now you can still make color adjustments to this, add contrast, adjust the lighting, things of that nature. But I think a vignette, a framing for a photo like this isn't entirely necessary. So there are some cases where you don't really need a vignette and you do need to make that judgment call on your own. But I think a pretty good time to leave out the vignette is when you do have a beautiful photo of nature and you don't really need to draw your eye towards anything in particular. You just want people to be able to see everything within the composition. My last tip is that you should use the proper color for your vignette based on your image. By this, I mean you don't always need to apply a black vignette. So if I create a new layer here, keep this named vignette, and I go to filters, light and shadow, vignette. A black vignette doesn't really add anything to this image. If anything, it actually takes away from the colors because there's a lot of white in here, and then there's even some pink from this rose, and then some lighter colors here in the cup. So adding a black vignette to this really doesn't help it at all. It doesn't enhance the photo. So with this being said, you can make the vignette a different color than black, and GIMP allows you to do that over here with the color selector. So if I click on this, I can change this to white, for example. And that actually makes a little bit more sense here. And I'm just going to click OK and leave the settings as is. And of course, as always, you can decrease the opacity of this if you don't want it to be as prevalent. Or you can even change the mode to something like soft light. And here's a before, here's an after. That just adds a little bit of white around the edges of our image without it being too prevalent and without really taking anything away from the photo as a whole. But you can also, and I'll hide that vignette, create a new layer keep it named vignette. You can go to filters, light and shadow, vignette. But let's say you want the vignette to be the same color as this pink here. I can click on my color box here and grab our color picker tool or our eyedrop tool and go ahead and click on one of the petals here. Click OK and click OK. Now we have a vignette that is the same color as that rose there. And then obviously we want to tone this down a little bit so we can decrease the opacity and we can even change the mode here to something like a soft light. But that's just allowed us to add a little bit more of that pinkish color from the rose into the image, and maybe that just helps you enhance the overall color palette of the image here. So just keep that in mind that vignettes are not always black. Uh, sometimes they can be white, sometimes they can be a color from your color palette within the image. And that can help to enhance the overall colors of the photo while also providing the other benefits of a vignette. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. Also, you can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And I'll include a link to that in the description as well as all of the relevant links from this tutorial. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.